Hey, guess what? You can install Android apps on Windows 11 now. Crazy, right? Well, there are a few drawbacks. First, you need to be a Windows insider, and you can only use the Amazon App Store. But guess what? We can get around both of those. It just takes a little bit of work, and then you can be running the Google Play Store on Windows 11. Now, I don't want to get too complicated here. What we're going to do is use a tool by somebody called LSposed, I hope that's how you say it, called Magisk on WSA, or Windows Subsystem for Android. Now, if you're into rooting and ROMing your Android phone, you're probably familiar with Magisk, but if you're not, don't worry about it. You do get to feel all cool and hackery though, which is a bonus. First, go to GitHub and sign in if you already have an account. If you don't have an account, now's a great time to make one. Now go to github.com slash lsposed slash magisk on WSA, then click fork to save a copy of the repo to your own profile. Now click actions. If your GitHub repository doesn't support workflows, then you need to enable that option by clicking I understand my workflows, go ahead and enable them. To prepare the files we're going to download, click run workflow. Once this is complete, you should see the message workflow run was successfully requested. Now it's time to choose your Android apps package. Pico installs just the bare minimum, while Full includes a bunch of open source Android apps that you would see on a normal AOSP installation. The workflow starts and will show in progress while it's running. Wait a few minutes for the process to complete. Once this is finished, just click the download link. Since we're talking Windows here, chances are very good you'll want the x64 version, not the ARM version. Now before we can get started installing Windows Subsystem for Android in the Google Play Store, you'll need to do a few things. First, we're going to enable developer mode. Click the start menu or press the Windows key, then search for developer settings. Open that, then turn on developer mode to let you install apps from any source. Now the fun part, we get to set up a virtual machine. Type Windows security and go to device security in the search box. Under core isolation, enable memory integrity. Now restart to finish this part of the process. After your computer has restarted, go to the search menu and type turn Windows features on or off. Enable the checkboxes for virtual machine platform and Windows hypervisor platform. Again, this will take a few minutes and then you'll need to restart your computer. Now there's one more thing. If you're not from the United States, you're going to need to change your region settings to the US because right now Windows Subsystem for Android and the Google Play Store are only supported in the United States. Find the zip file you downloaded from GitHub earlier and unzip it. Now open the folder and find the file named install. This is a PowerShell script, so right click and select run in PowerShell. Press the A button to allow everything to run. Once everything is finished installing, this should exit automatically, and then you're ready to run Windows Subsystem for Android. We just have a few things to tidy up before we're totally done. First, go to WSA settings from the start menu search and make sure developer mode is enabled. Next, configure the optional diagnostic data for Windows Subsystem for Android. Either keep it on or turn it off completely. Finally, we need to let the apps installed as part of this process initialize. This will take a little while and it'll need at least eight gigs of RAM. It'll help if you have a little bit more. After this, you can search for the Google Play Store and it should come up in Windows Search. You'll need to sign into your Google Play Services account and then there will be a few updates and then you're good to go. And there you go. If everything went according to plan, you should now have the Google Play Store up and running on your Windows 11 PC. For more information, check out the related article over at maketecheasier.com. There's a bunch of other useful information there if you have trouble. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.